Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to another floss tube tutorial episode. And today we're finishing the old fashioned sal. I'm gonna show you how to finish it on this awesome board from Chantal's 141 Design. She designed this uh, for our finishing for this sal, but you can use it for other things as well. So definitely look at your charts. I'm kind of thinking like stitching with the housewives, some of their fun like bakery Christmas type charts or even fall or or if you want to switch them out, there's probably some ways you can do that. But um, I think it could be used in lots of different ways. So definitely think outside the box. Um, even though Chantal kind of created it for me and for you guys who are finishing yours, um, for hot your hot cocoa bars, please keep in mind that I think it really could be used for other things. I'm going to take some uh, sticky board. I'm using the nine by 12 size first. And with my ruler there, I was just measuring out my finished, um, my, fa my finished stitch so I knew how big I wanted it. I'm using the nine by 12 sheets of sticky board, but I feel like my stitch is about, <sighs> leaving about a quarter of an inch on every side that's going to be eight and a half by nine and a half so i'm just going to trim a half inch off of um, each side of the sticky board and this is going to be perfect for the um, background of this and i am using a guillotine trimmer sticky board is kind of hard to cut if you are using sticky board now I have a mess of leftover batting. I actually use this for all kinds of projects. When I send my quilts in, I always buy the warm and white batting on a huge roll. And because of that, I generally have some extra that I cut off. I use it for pillows or cross stitch finishes, all of that good stuff. For my finish for the old fashioned sal, I like to use a couple of layers of batting. I don't like my stitch to go straight to the sticky board. I like it to have a little bit of a puffy texture to it. And I, one layer of batting is probably plenty, but I found that I really, really like two. So I am just cutting up this mess of leftover batting that I have. Um, but you, if you need to get batting or if you don't even wanna use batting, you don't necessarily have to. That is just a personal preference. I am showing you how I finish something in this video um, and hopefully it provides some inspiration for your own finishes. I am going to cut down two pieces of this, again, to eight and a half by 11 and a half inches since that is um, the size of the sticky board. I want it to be exactly that size. Now, because I left two inches around all sides of my finished stitch when I got started, I have plenty to work with and I didn't trim it down any extra. I probably could have, but um, I will tell you guys, a lot of times I'll leave it because um, I do trim mine down. I don't leave it on a huge piece of fabric. Um, before I get started stitching and a lot of times and you're gonna notice with how I'm finishing it's because I feel like if I ever need to pull apart my stitch for any reason I can do that um, and and refinish it maybe frame it or something if I don't cut off too much of it um, maybe that's silly maybe I will never pull it apart but I think that's kind of my little safety measure if you will is leaving that two inch edge now I don't do it all the time but I did end up doing it today because I felt like I didn't need to trim it off you will also notice that I'm not gonna use tons of hot glue. Well, I say that. <laughs> I'm gonna use the hot glue when I get to adding picks and things and adding the boards or uh, the sticky board to our backer board. But when I am working with the actual fabric itself, I tend to try to use something else. And I have a couple of great product options for you that I'm gonna show. You can kind of see some of them there on the screen. Please ignore how messy my desk is. It's been some fast and furious crafting here uh, lately with all of the things and I need a cleanup day in the worst way. Now I am gonna remove the backing for the sticky board. This is the eight and a half by 11 and a half piece, the one our cross stitch is gonna go on. And I'm using something to keep my fingers out of it because it's real sticky. <laughs> real real sticky. I'm going to fold my batting in half since this is a larger finish 
And I'm gonna lay it down at the top and I'm just gonna kind of roll it down to the bottom, smoothing with my hand, securing it right to that sticky board. I don't wanna stretch it out too much, but I like to get it nice and flat. And then I'm just gonna lay the second piece of batting on top. It can shift a little bit. You could use some spray basting if you want. I probably should have because I did kind of struggle with it, but it's fine. Now, if any of the batting is hanging off the board, I just go ahead at this point and take my rotary cutter and remove that so that it's nice and clean because it does have a tendency to stretch just a little bit um, if you pull and I probably smoothed it out and pulled it or tugged it a little bit, but not too bad. Okay, so now we are going to grab some of these sticky finishing dots from Fat Quarter Shop, and I have the large and the small. I'm gonna use the large for this, but on the back, I'm gonna place one of these in each corner. I love these, and I also love the sticky tape from Fat Quarter Shop, and you guys, as sticky as, if you've used sticky board, as sticky as sticky board is, these are sticky. This is how I get out of using so much hot glue. If you are not a huge fan of hot glue, I know there's a lot of, of you who just don't love hot glue all that much, you could probably get by with using other adhesives uh, like this for all of your, your fabric finishing and then maybe um, use something else or, or use the hot glue like I'll show you I'm going to do when I get to that. And I can't believe I flipped that over after I removed the circle. Kind of dumb. So now I've got my stitch piece. Look at it. Oh my gosh, you guys. This was a labor of love. Um, I told Chantal, uh, back stitching is not my favorite. <laughs> and she, she laughed because, uh, it's just hard. Um, I put off all of that back stitching of the words at the bottom. I thought it wasn't going to be too bad. And I have to tell you guys, I did not love it. I didn't love it at all. I loved stitching it, but I'm super glad that I left off the back stitching around hot cocoa. I don't think it needs it. I love the teeny tiny little back stitch borders, but uh, all of the words, not my favorite, but how amazing does it look? So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good and bad because it does make the stitch and I love this. In fact, I couldn't love the finish anymore. So it turned out like way better than I even imagined when I started talking to Chantal about a finishing board for this, um, what I had envisioned. And then she came up with something way better than what I thought. And something that I think is versatile, won't take up that much room and allows you for some creativity and decoration, uh, which is definitely what I want. So we will get to that here in just a minute and I will show you how to uh, put that together. Removing the backing paper from the circles, I am going to try to make a 90 degree corner and pull my fabric. And I'm gonna do diagonal corners so that I can pull it nice and tight. And I'm using something sharp to help pull it up because I've got nails and it's hard for me. So I often will use some sort of a tool to pull that up. And I'm just, at this point, I'm gonna double check to see that if my measurement looks right, and it does, I'm gonna go ahead and pull in the other two corners. So I'm just removing the backing paper and I'm pulling this in. Now I would have a lot less fabric if I had cut this down. So that's kind of what I was talking about, how I went ahead and saved my fabric and did not cut it down. It does not need to be this big. I probably could have cut it to about a half inch on every side. Now this is the double-sided tape. Any of my Halloween finishes that I shared here a few weeks ago, I use the double-sided tape for my cross-stitch finish instead of hot glue. And I had originally started thinking I'd use hot glue and I, it just wasn't feeling right to me. So, and I had picked this product up from Fat Quarter Shop, but I was like, oh, I, you know, who knows if I'm gonna use it, whatever. I ended up pulling it out of my um, drawer and I have used so much of it. It is an amazing product. I can't recommend it enough. It is super sticky. And I feel that it allows me to 
um, have a little bit more play. If I was using glue and I didn't get this exactly right, I wouldn't be able to pull it up and pull it tighter. With the sticky tape, I can and it stays sticky. If it doesn't, you could pull it off and put another piece on, but I haven't had that happen. Um, so I am folding in the two long sides and then I'm going to fold in the, the two short sides and I'm gonna really work to make sure my corners are nice and crisp or as crisp as I can get them without lacing my back. I have laced a back. I did the, um, oh, the hands-on design Halloween stitch along costume party. I did lace the back of that and I love it, but it was really small. This would have taken forever. Um, and while I really like lacing and I do think I will attempt to do it again in the future for backs, I, um, I was going for the fast and easy today. <laughs> so now that I have those two sides, I am going to go ahead and do the top and the bottom. It is very, very sticky. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like even sticking to these scissors. And these scissors are great because adhesive doesn't really stick to them very good. They're Tim Holtz scissors. I love them. And I'm just using this little sharp tip from a little pokey tool thing from my paper crafting. You could also use the tip of a sharp pair of scissors or something to pull that or even like a straight pen or or a needle to pull that backing off. And I'm gonna pull these down. And I can see already that I don't, my corners are not as sharp as I want. So I will end up pulling them up a bit and reworking them. And you can always add more adhesive. And I did add more adhesive. So there are large and small of these sticky dots from Fat Quarter Shop, and I ended up using both sizes. The little ones, I did go in and kind of tuck them under in a few places that I wanted a little more security. Before I secure that last side, I am going to work to smooth, to kind of move things around, get this looking exactly the way I want it to look. Um, and then I will go ahead and fold this down. And same thing with the corners. I'm going to try to get those nice and sharp. Now, I know that the tutorial today is a little long. I did not want to speed a ton of it up. Uh, there will be parts of it that I will speed up a little bit. But I felt like a lot of this with the sticky board and the batting and using the sticky products to mount our stitch was something that I wanted to show you in real time. Now, anything with a border can kind of give you fits. So this is me working and maneuvering things. And here, this is where that tape comes in handy. I didn't like how something looked on the front and now I don't like it again, uh, but I can kind of keep moving and pulling until I get this looking the way I want. I don't want those borders, um, contorted too much or anything. I want them to be as straight as I can get. So I'm just going to kind of kind of fluff it with my hands, smooth with my hands until I get it. And I think it looks great. I'm really, really happy with it. I think it's super beautiful. Now I want to share with the fabric. This is some Lori Holt fabric and I am going to speed it up because this is basically the same thing minus the batting. Now this time I am going to place the sticky board directly on the fabric. This is some of um, the Lori Holt plaids. I had picked this up because I'm using a lot of Lori Holt fabric for her scrappiness is happiness quilt along and I already had it but I know that Priscilla and Chelsea from Stitching with the Housewives have loads of awesome checks and stripes and all of that good stuff so definitely check those out too and Lori Holt has tons of plaids in this collection that are beautiful. Now I did cut this pretty close. I didn't use a ruler. I did try to line up the sticky board with the uh, the plaid design and I picked this because of that little plaid border in the stitch. So I very much chose my fabric based on my stitch and the other thing I want to mention about this is that this sticky board is a 9 by 12 piece. This is the one, the size I used for the stitch, but I trimmed down a half inch. This time I didn't trim it down. I got to use it as is. Same thing as before I did use because I have a little bit smaller piece of fabric. I used the smaller sticky dots. 
And then I'm going to take the tape and we're going to do the exact same thing as before. We're gonna wrap the sides nice and tight. Um, I don't wanna pull so tight that I distort the plaid, but this is gonna create a beautiful little decorative backer that will set this, the stitch apart from the backer board. We're gonna peel that up. And I like coming in from the side and just kind of smoothing it. And we're gonna do the top and the bottom. And again, work those corners, lift them up if you need to, um, kind of pick them up, pull them tight. I feel like the corners are the thing to work with the most. And I think it's what the sticky dots and the sticky tape, it's the biggest benefit of using it over a liquid glue. Because with liquid glue, you can also do this, but I think you burn your fingers. <laughs> At least I burned mine. It might just be me, you guys. I totally know that it might just be me. Okay, look at that. Perfect, I love this plaid. Um, I should mention too that I had several of Lori's plaids to work with. She also has one that's more on the diagonal. I picked this one because I felt like it matched the design and the stitch. So that little border there, how cute is it, you guys? I love it. Okay, that's the perfect amount around the edge. Now I'm gonna take some of this beautiful red and white ribbon from Stitching with the Housewives, also available from Fat Quarter Shop. Oh my gosh, you guys, I couldn't love it more. So I'm showing you how I'm folding the ribbon. It's not two-sided, so you kind of have to be a little bit um, careful, I should say, with how you fold this. But what I like to do is I thread a needle because I, I like my ribbon a specific way. I like it to be, um, I like it to look like it's tied, I guess, even though it's not because tying it doesn't lay very nice. So I did twist those back pieces in my fingers and I'm just folding it in half so I can see right where the center is where I wanna stitch. And I am now gonna take my threaded needle and I'm gonna just go up and down through the center it's not even nice. It's not even, it. it's not a nice stitch at all. <laughs> it's very quick and easy. It's kind of like a running stitch, but it's going to help me gather the ribbon. And then I'm going to pull gently and I'm going to wrap this around the center of the ribbon multiple times to give it more of that tied look. I almost always cover up the center of my bow with something decorative. Um, you could use buttons, you could use an embellishment. Uh, I have seen so many of my favorite floss tubers. Java Girl Stitches does a lot of really cute little pieces in the center. Chantal does a lot of cute little things in the center. Uh, little pieces you can pick up at Hobby Lobby or Walmart or, or other craft stores. Um, and so there's lots of options here. So I'm not worried if this looks great. I'm just wanting it to be secure. And then in the back, I'm just going to knot this. And then it will be secure because I will glue this down to my stitch with hot glue. But I feel like doing that little running stitch, it literally takes no time. And I can very, very easily, um, kind of maneuver and manipulate it. See, look how cute it looks, because it looks just more like a bow that's tied, but obviously it looks kind of ugly in the center. Well, we're gonna use some jingle bells, and I will tell you those little, those red bells over to the side, I picked up in the Wonder Shop at Target this season. Uh, they might have something similar. Michael's or Hobby Lobby probably has some bells too. I did see some bells at Walmart just a couple days ago. They had like little greenery on them. Those would be really cute too um, in the center of this if you are looking for something similar. Um, but I'm gonna tell you that this twine that comes with them, zero stars, I do not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I, I was like, why would they put this in here and not thread it through? Um, I don't know why. I thought I could make it work. I just left this part in the video because I thought it was funny watching me fiddle with this. And if you could have, if I had left the sound in, me going, what in the world? <laughs> 
Um, I threw it away. <laughs> I threw all of that, that twine away. But these bells are like the perfect size. They actually make the little bell, jingle bell sound. And they're so, so pretty. I thought they matched the stitch really nicely. So that is what I'm going to use in the center. And I will show you how I'm going to attach those in a minute. Now, I did end up using hot glue on the back of this. So, um, I do think it would eventually be able to be pulled off, but I want this to be secured to my backer board. So I am securing my stitch to the board. If you want to save your fabric, like I was mentioning earlier in the video, what I would recommend is only put hot glue in the center where the sticky board back is. Uh, that would have been smarter, so ignore me. Um, sometimes I say dumb things. That's just how it is. Ugh. Okay, so much fun. So I've glued that. I'm just letting it sit and letting it cool. Um, yes, that's the backer board. I know I'm going to show it. I'm going to show you the assembly here in a minute, but I've got a thinner ribbon here. I will tell you this little teeny tiny black gingham is a Stampin' Up ribbon, but I'm sure you could find some at um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, probably even Walmart. I noticed my Walmart had tons of ribbon. Um, just something that you can string the jingle bells on, and then you're going to thread them on and you're going to tie in the front because look, it pulls them up. And then you're going to make a little bow right in the center. This is my favorite way to add jingle bells to like gift tags, like the little decorative jingle bells that Tim Holtz has and stuff. Um, it's a really easy way to attach them and it's cute because you get a little bow, you get the jingle bells, but look how pretty that makes the center of the bow. Um, but that little gingham is a Stampin' Up! ribbon. I know I'm gonna get asked, so I wanted to make sure and uh, let you know that. I literally had it in my stash. It's not, it, it might still be available. Um, if it is, I will make sure I've linked it down below uh, because I did get it not too long ago. I love Stampin' Up! ribbon. I always have. I have, it's about the only ribbon I still have in my stash uh, back from the day, but now I have lots of uh, stitching with the housewives and I also have a ton of like beautiful Hobby Lobby and Michaels ribbon, seasonal ribbons that I use for cross stitch finishes. So here is how I kind of plan out my, my finishing. I am playing with different picks and I believe all of these are from Michaels. I want to say I should have held on to the tags. Um, I know the greenery pieces are. I'm pretty sure that the peppermints are as well. And I definitely picked the peppermints because I felt like they matched the rest of the design. So this is the backer board. And yes, Chantal generously sent three of them, which means I will be offering two as a giveaway in my Thanksgiving floss tube. So definitely stay tuned for that. But in the um, kit. You're going to get four of those small pieces for the little drawer at the bottom and the backer board. And what's great about this is it makes it a free standing design. Um, I do recommend gluing it together and then painting it. Um, if you're going to stain it, you could definitely stain the pieces first. So that is an option. Chantal has so many fantastic ideas, you guys, for different painting techniques on her channel. I highly, highly recommend you checking her out. I'm going to have a link to her shop down below. I'm going to have a specific link to this backer board down below um, because it is amazing. And what I love is she's provided this little shallow drawer that is perfect to add, like she suggested, mason jars that you could put like marshmallows and little toppings and things for your hot cocoa bar in. How cute is that? Um, so it, it will fit some mason jars and she sized it that way on purpose. You're gonna see that I just took a little hodgepodge of decorative things, mostly from Target, um, but fill it with fun things to your heart's desire. Chantal recommends this tight bond glue available at Lowe's, and I highly recommend it. Anything that I have built from her, I have used this glue. It is fast acting and nice and strong, and I really, really highly recommend it. Um, if you get a little too much glue, you're gonna see me just take my finger and immediately wipe it and smooth it out. I have no problem using a sander um, <laughs> at all. Now I will tell you guys, I do have electric sanders and I do use them most of the time. I don't use, usually use sandpaper. You can totally use sandpaper. 
Uh, you do not have, I just bought them for something else and I love them. So when you see me sand things, and I will try to include some of that video here in a minute to show you the painting, that is what I have used. So I am simply attaching the long piece to the bottom and then I'm going to attach the sides. And I find you just have to hold it for a couple of minutes. It's not very long. In fact, I wanna kind of do the whole drawer and that's what I would recommend. And then you can place the backer on. It's really self-explanatory. I mean, it really is very easy to put together, I promise. Um, you just put a little glue probably need to put a little more glue than that. Yeah. I'm, I see that now as I look back at this. I'm like, oh, I hope you added more glue. Always more glue. Always. But you're getting the real time of me putting this together. And you can see the little drawer or the little basket take shape. I particularly love that it's nice and shallow, so anything you put in this is going to still be visible. And another thing that Chantal really thought through when she designed this was that she made the backer long enough that you can put your stitch high enough on there that it, it's going to leave some space at the bottom so you're not covering up a ton. You'll, you'll have noticed at the beginning of the video and then at the end when I show the finished piece again that uh, I did put some tall things in there that do cover up just a little bit here and there, but I really wanted it to be somewhat functional on the hot cocoa bar as well as decorative. So I've placed some fun like little marshmallow stir sticks and chocolate stir sticks. Um, Target has had these really cute ones the last few years. Um, I, I do think I'm going to probably add a little mason jar filled with marshmallows that I've picked up and add those to the hot cocoa bar just for fun. So there's the little drawer. There's me with all my glue. Let's clean my fingers off. And once that is dry, I would probably let it dry a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna show you here. In fact, I, since I have another one, I'm gonna go ahead and attach the backer board. And it is big. It's hard to get it all in the frame uh, when I'm working, but I am just going to attach that. So one of you in the giveaway is going to get an assembled little little uh, basket, not the whole board, but the little basket, um, because I, for as demo purposes, Chantal sent me one assembled so I could see how to do it, which I really appreciate. She is so thoughtful and so kind, and I just want to thank everyone that supports her shop, her Etsy shop, um, buying the floss keepers, buying her backer boards, and all of her good stuff, and uh, following her YouTube channel, because she does have amazing inspiration on her channel. Okay, and then I just take my fingernail. You could also, like, I'm going to take this rag, but I'd probably normally use a paper towel. I'm just going to clean up some of that glue so it doesn't dry with these globs. And then I'm just gonna kind of pinch it shut. I found it really dried better like on its back, but we're gonna let that dry. And then we're gonna hop outside. And you guys, this was hard for me to film, but I got parts of it. Now there's my Odin and it's sped up. So you're gonna see he thought he was helping me. Um, I have one coat of this charcoal black paint on here already. However, um, I think something touched it or whatever. Anyway, I'm just going to give it another spray. So this is charcoal black chalk paint. I like spray paint. It's fast and easy. And more Odin helping me. Now this is not actually the sander. Okay, this is my round sander, but I also have a corner sander. It worked better, but I forgot to film that part of it because I did start to sand with my little flat one right along the edges. But this is me outside working and Odin is always with me messing around, being unhelpful. 
<laughs> okay. And then I did off camera, um, just because spraying is not interesting, I did seal it with a matte sealant spray from the same company. I will list down in the description below exactly what I used, um, but look at the distressing around the edges. It's pretty simple distressing, but I absolutely love how it turned out. Um, I couldn't be happier with it. Just a little simple spray paint. You can achieve the exact same look without an electric sander. Sandpaper will work great. Uh, Chantal has mentioned something else. It's like a, this little corner sanding tool. I probably should pick one up the next time it, I'm at Lowe's or something, but that would be fantastic as well. So I kind of know where my stitch is going to go, and this is where a hot glue gun comes in handy. I have my hot glue gun right here, and I'm going to start gluing my picks down in place. Ignore all of those strings of hot glue everywhere. I want to use a piece of greenery and different heights add extra interest. I really should have brought this down a little bit. The hot glue, I got a new hot glue gun a few months ago when I started being a crazy cross stitch girl again and wanting to finish. <laughs> and it's fantastic. I feel like the glue in this stays liquid longer than my old hot glue gun, which dried instantly and was very hard to manipulate. This almost takes too long to dry. It doesn't. I, I'm glad for that because it does allow me a little playtime. I was able to manipulate my little peppermint twists and peppermint stick and greenery, but the, the pick part is pretty thin, which is great. But I'm gonna show you my favorite hack to make your board lay nice, your stitch piece lay nicer on a board if you want to hide pieces back behind. And I did this with my tombstone, the um, Toil and Trouble Sal finish that I shared in my Halloween finish video, uh, floss tube video, because I did raise up, I, I made some little, what I kind of call spacers on the back out of some extra sticky board. So I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. That's kind of how it's gonna look. I'm loving it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love it. Ignore that huge mess. You can see it started to dry and then it kind of made a mess. I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of glue back here. See what's hidden underneath all the prettiness? Some ugly, <laughs> quite frankly, uh, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna kind of make sure those are where I want them to go. They kept moving. So I'm gonna grab my bottle of rubbing alcohol that's heavy. I use it to clean my glass mat and stuff in when I'm crafting. And I'm actually gonna set that on top for a minute. And I am gonna show you how I made the little spacers. I cut four uh, pieces. I think they're about an inch and a half by eight and a half. I'm gonna pull the backing off and I'm gonna stick two together. That's, you don't have to make them super, super high. That's gonna be really enough to make your stitch piece lay nice and flat. And then I'm gonna to stick two together. I'm gonna to peel off the backing paper and I'm gonna stick it down one side of the stitch. So let me grab it. There's my <laughs> rubbing alcohol spray bottle, but it's holding everything flat. So on the back, down one side, I'm just going to pop that down in place. And it's so sticky, you guys, it stays put. It's amazing. I am going to do the same thing down the other side. You can see that it raises it up. It's going to allow like a little channel in between where you can stick your picks down. I'm a huge fan of these little picks off the top of things. Um, and But it makes it so your, bat, your stick your fabric board or your stitching piece doesn't lay very nice and I don't want it to be lumpy and weird. So this is my little hack for that. And I figured this out again when I did that tombstone finishing piece for the Toil and Trouble Primrose Cottage finish that I shared. Okay, it looks like my glue is finally drying. I'm gonna move that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put glue down both of these pieces. And that's how we're going to attach it to the board. And it works so good. I ran out of hot glue sticks, so let me grab one and shove it in here real quick. And this is again where the hot glue staying liquid longer in this new gun works fantastic. Highly recommend, I love it. And then I'm lining my stitch piece up. You can kind of see how I've, I'm trying to get 
equal distance on each side as well as that little ridge piece. I love how it's rounded up at the top. Perfect for bows or picks or little decorative elements for your stitches. And isn't it amazing that that board, how, how like it looks like a piece you would buy finished if you sand it a little bit and rough it up. It looks like something that you would buy that way, but it was very easy to achieve. And then I'm gonna take a little hot glue and I'm going to glue my bow so it hides the top of those picks a little bit. And we're going to secure that down in place. And that is it. Once the hot glue dries, I'm gonna let that sit for for a little bit, make sure it's nice and dry. I'm just gonna make sure it's attached. Um, once it is nice and dry, you can fill it up, add it to your hot cocoa bar and enjoy it for the season. So if you guys have any questions on any of the steps for finishing this or how I did something, please drop me a comment down below. I would love to answer anything that you want to know about this. Let me know um, if you would like to see more videos like this on finishing. And please go check out Chantal's shop. Definitely pick up this backer board, whether you did this stitch or not. If you have a nice, long, big stitch, this is a fantastic board, you guys, to do a bigger piece on and not have to frame it. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.